I'm Bruce A. Parr, and this is Frank J. Rich, and you're watching Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog. Hello, this is Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog. Thanks for watching, and every week we like to remind you that we are brought to you by the Penny Saver and by our parent company, Chase Media Group, and for that we thank my co-host, Frank J. Rich, and our CEO, Carla Chase, for uh, putting us up here. And even though the show is called Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog, there's always an and, because it's Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog and... <laughs> Rosemary Panio this week. Rosemary, th thank you for being thank with us. Thank you so and much for having welcome. me. Thank you. And uh, you're pretty well known around Westchester. I uh, guess I'm notorious, I yeah, say. Well, no, I don't know about notorious, <laughs> but you've been uh, heavily involved uh, in your past with politics. Yes. And, uh, and I guess maybe people didn't know until now uh, that you're you know, also a uh, cook, and now you've written a cookbook. Yep. Uh, celebrate Italy and its culture of food and wine, which we're going to talk about today. And I know, of course, my co-host Frank uh, is also quite an expert on this subject. I've eaten his uh, home-cooked meals, and they're delicious, better than going out to a restaurant, anyhow. <laughs> um, so, you know, we want to have a, a really uh, appetizing discussion, you might say. Right? Um, and, uh, you know, what is it that uh, prompted you to write the book? I mean, you were telling us before, the sh before we went on the air that uh, you've been doing this your whole life when you go back to your homeland of Italy and and you just decided you're going to put it all together, right? Well, I developed a database over the years, and um, it was very important to me to collect and to remember the recipes uh, of my, my parents uh, and my family. And at some point, I started uh, realizing that I really needed to do something with these recipes because I did want them passed on to my children and my grandchildren. So I started... Um, not only improving my database, but I also started collecting a series of recipes that I would then put in a book, which would be the important ones, so to speak, that they would have to try to find. And I'm sure many people, especially Italian-Americans, but not only Italian-Americans, remember some of these recipes, but they have, probably don't have any idea how to make them anymore since grandma's not around and and plus i lost my mother right. and i lost my aunt so who was i going to call now <laughs> if if i didn't remember something so that really prompted me to do something about it yeah, most people usually i guess stop at putting them on index cards right <laughs> and they don't go any further than that but, yeah. but you decided to publish uh, the book and it's it, we, we just before you know, we go through the 30 minutes goes fast and then we forget, uh, how would somebody get a hold of the book? They'd go online and order Online, yeah, bookstores, right, right. yes. Okay. Or they right. could call me and the number is up. And up I'll, on the screen, yeah. We'll if show they're it, in, yeah. A, uh, in an immediate area, I will certainly get it to them some way and have a lovely conversation with them as well. So. Right, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, just in segueing over to Frank, that Frank's published a book. Uh, He's a cook and he's published a book, but he hasn't published a cookbook. <laughs> he's published a novel, Raising mm -hmm. Father, so you have something in common there. I look forward I, to reading yeah, it. Yeah, yes. it's very good. I would say I cook, not no. am a cook. Okay, well. I cook. Okay. I, uh, but in any event, the, um, uh, the thing that strikes me about uh, your book and reading through it, as I have, uh, is, um, uh, is not only the, the decision-making that... Um, uh, that you made to preserve the recipes of old, but uh, but the the sense of of uh, the tradition, uh, its uh, connections to regions, um, the uh, the complementary uh, um, things that you do around the recipes to uh, explain the uh, the regions, the wines which complement the foods, the culture in those areas. 
um, all made sense to you somehow in preparing uh, a cookbook, which someone might just deliver uh, on pages of recipes. And, uh, and so the book is aptly titled uh, Celebrate Italy and Its Culture of Food and Wine. And, um, and uh, you have a unique perspective on that even. I mean, as, a, as someone with an Italian heritage, I, I have uh, some connection. But, but you earlier described uh, the origins of uh, the peoples in some of the regions as being very Greek and so forth. And so obviously things mean much more to you than just simply a recipe and its yes, preservation. Yes. And perhaps you'd like to speak to that well, a little. Well, the, the cultures of the various regions um, are very important to me. I found it very interesting. And interesting that traditions that are centuries old still influence the, the local cuisines, the local winemaking, the mm. local lifestyle, really. So I found that very interesting. I was very blessed in my life that I had the good fortune to meet a great man uh, in my travels as a skier, as an amateur skier, and um, met this uh, professional soccer player who, by the way, at the time, we didn't even know what soccer was in this country. So when everybody made a big fuss, I thought, what's the fuss? What and is and this? Over the, and over in Europe, of course, it's football. Right. right. <laughs> why, why is everybody chasing that ball? You know, right. I couldn't understand the game. But uh, I had the good fortune to meet a wonderful man whom I've been married to for 48 and a half years. <laughs> and traveling through Italy, we lived in a number of provinces. We lived in Piemonte, Piedmont. We lived in Tuscany. We lived in Umbria. And traveled throughout the peninsula uh, where he played. So I was very lucky that I could do this. And um, since he was kind of taken away by his coach so that uh, they could all concentrate on, their, on working out and playing, uh, I had a lot of time to visit museums and restaurants and wineries and really absorb the local cultures and make friends. I've never been a person that particularly liked resorts, per se. I've always liked to be with people. Mm -hmm. So I found myself getting invited into people's homes, uh, come back next time you're here, come visit us. And so I acquired an appreciation and I became an observer of all these different nuances between the regions and the cultures. And really, it's been such an important part of my life. It's really changed my life. So um, I still, of course, go back every year. Now that we're retired, we spend at least a couple of months a year in Italy. And, um, and I have an opportunity to go back and revisit some of these places and visit with, with friends and family. So I'm truly blessed that way. Do you, do you uh, ever see, uh, when you go back, dishes that uh, are new to you? or that? Are yes, some. And uh, like last summer, we spent two weeks in Sardinia. I had never been to Sardinia. My husband used to play there in Cagliari, which is the, the capital. But I never went with him. I had, at that point, I had young children, infants. So it was a little harder for me because you had to fly into Sardinia or take El Draghetto, which is a ferry, which is really not, wasn't too pleasant in, in the 60s. And, um, but this year, last year we went back, we went there. I, for the first time, he went back. And we rented a house. My nephew, who was the photographer for my cover, uh, rented a house there, and um, we spent two weeks. And I wound up making friends with other people who lived around there, and, uh, and they invited me into their home, and I learned how to make porchetto, which is a suckling pig. We would call porchetta. Mm -hmm. The Italians would call porchetta. They called porchetto. And I learned to make their classic dessert, which seadas, which is in the, the recipe part of the book, the, the sweets and um, just learned a lot about their culture, their language. It sounds different. It, most of the words don't end in a vowel. They end in an S. It's very Greek. It's also very Spanish, very mission. The architecture is Spanish mission. So it, it's just a wonderful experience to see how diverse. You would think that Italy is a homogeneous society, but it's really very diverse, diverse. as well. Do you so. speak fluent Italian? Yes, I do. Yeah. And of course, Rocco does. Oh, right? yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes. And what about you know, talking about making food or re food, you know, recipe for food and then pairing it with wine? I know a lot of people around here make their own wine, right? It's, as as we do from time do? to time. Yeah. Yes. We do. Occasionally we do. Every few years. We, we didn't make it last year. We made it the year before. And um, uh, it was very good. We enjoyed it. 
But we happen to be wine lovers, so we like to try all of the wines from all the different regions. We try to keep up with that. And as you know, we were in the wine business I was for say, 40 you, years. So you, how, yes. how long did you have your store in Peekskill? 39 and a half years. Oh, wow. Mm. Yes. And that was just up until, what, a couple of years ago? Yes, a yeah. couple of years ago. Yeah. And we should mention, it's a good <laughs> another good segue, is that you're chairing the wine tasting. Uh, you're, you're the logical person to do that for the, hot, for the Hudson Valley Yes, I've uh, been November doing that 15. for a few years right. now. We, yeah. uh, we put together a wine tasting at Trump National Golf Course. Right. And it's to benefit the Ashikari Breast Care yes. Foundation right. of Hudson Valley Hospital Center. Yes, and right. we have a lovely time where the wine is all donated, as is all of the food from area restaurants. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, almost all of the proceeds go to the Ashikari Breast Care Foundation. Yeah. And it's a, it's a great night. Yes, we have, it a, is. We have yeah. a very good time. Right. Yeah, yeah. we've both enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. been with it last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the recipes, okay. uh, and uh, and uh, in keeping with your approach to things, let's uh, let's complement that uh, with a more comprehensive view of things. When when we we cook, uh, there may be five elements to it. Uh, we pr we list the ingredients. Um, we think about the preparation. Um, we think about the things that might to complement the actual dish that we're going to prepare. We, we uh, have cooking techniques that we use, which are often lost in the translations of, uh, of recipes. And then finally, the presentation. Um, uh, tell us about uh, uh, some of the recipes and how all of these things uh, matter uh, for where they come from and how they uh, arrived uh, as recipes. Um, well, as you know, Italy is made up of 20 regions, mm -hmm. and each region really has its own cuisine. Uh, if you go into southern Italy, for instance, Rome is the dividing lines. Rome and south is the olive oil belt. North of Rome is the butter belt. Uh, a lot of it has to do with climate, geography, the microclimates, what foods can grow there, uh, how they prepare them. Um, Italians are very... Um, it's very important for them to eat local foods. Mm -hmm. They're local boys. Yeah. Local foods, stuff that's grown locally, has been grown locally for years, centuries, if you will. Right. And their own preparation of it. And have they deviated in some ways from that? Yeah, of course. The, the cooking has evolved. Right. But those basic recipes are there. And because I traveled so much in Italy, I get... To, to taste all of these and appreciate the culture around them. So when I come home, I really don't think about the province, or I just think about what do I need to prepare today or this week for my family. And uh, the calendar has a lot to do with it. When I first started approaching the idea of putting a book together, I said to my daughter Pamela, I said, I don't know, how am I going to do this? Because I need to find a reason to select certain recipes and not others. And she said, well, why don't you do what we do? I said, well, well who's we? <laughs> well, us, the family. She said, we use the liturgical calendar. Why do we prepare certain dishes at certain times of the year? Well, yes, because they're, they're, they're grown that time of year or they're available that time of year. But they also match our liturgical calendar, our feasts, our holidays, mm -hmm. et cetera. So that's, that was my guide in putting. I started with uh, uh, New Year's Day. And I just went around the calendar, and that's what made me select some of the recipes that I put in there. So let's focus on a couple of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, choose a recipe, a dish, uh, and tell us a little bit about it and, uh, and all of the meaning around it. Well, for instance... Or shall I do that? Oh, you can do that if you <laughs> like. For instance, New Year's Day, we generally have... <laughs> Most of Italy eats lenticchie, lentils, right. mm -hmm. with, um, I'm now I'm going to forget the name of the sausage that I have in there. Uh, I'll have to look it up. Right. I, cotocchino. Now, cotocchino was okay. only available in the Parma, originally was right. only available in the Parma uh, Modena area, mm -hmm. cotocchino di Modena. That's usually what, oh, they'll eat sausage or pork for New Year's. What was the reason for that originally? Well... Most people in, in the provinces, now this is not the big cities, this is a, well, most of this is very provincial cooking, right. uh, would have their own pig. And the, ki the pig would be slaughtered in the wintertime for the holidays. 
they'd raise the pig all year, mm -hmm. and they'd uh, slaughter it for the holidays. Right. And from that, they would make their sausage, their prosciutto, and everything came from that. Guanciale, they would use the cheek for one type of a, of a cold cut, and every part of, of the animal got used. Even the blood of the pig, they would make sanguinaccio, which is a blood pudding. So that celebrated, that was the celebration of, for the new year. Right. And they would have these available. So that's really what I used. I used my calendar, my Easter recipes, what I, what I start making towards summer, what I make during the summer. And as, we get co as it gets colder, right. I'll make the minestrones and, mm -hmm. the, and the, the heavier soups. And so that was really my guide um, to decide which recipes to include. I wanted enough of them in each season Easter, of course, you have to have lamb. I mean, Easter is served right. for lamb. Uh, uh, lamb is served for Easter, and uh, being half Abruzzese, from Abruzzo, from the Apennines, where the lamb is grown, right. you know, it's almost a sacrilege not to have uh, a lamb for Easter. So uh, th this, is, this was my guide, really, to help me along. Right. So it's very structured. You know, very structured. You, yeah. Very structured. Matter of fact, if you make a dish out of season, the, everyone in the family says, well, how come we're having this? It's only, it's only May. Why are we eating this? <laughs> but the, book, but the, uh, the cookbook isn't organized that way. No. Right? It's, no. Uh, it's organized by the, uh, whether by it's an appetizer right. or an entree. I have appetizers, no. right. primi piatti, which is first dish, secondi piatti, second dish entree. Right. And I have dolce, which is all of Now, the dolce part of the book, the sweets, the rest, the, the desserts, are probably recipes that most people have had right. probably from their grandmothers but don't know how to they make did. anymore. Right. So I took that collection that I thought was the most important and, and put that in. Not that there aren't more, but that was, those were the most important ones that we have to remember and we have to pass those what on. What are some right. of those? Right. Pardon me? What are some of those? Well, pizzelle, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Describe that as pizzelle the Pizzelle is, the is, the a, cookie, is uh, a, a very flaky, a cookie that you put in a press and it comes like a pizza, pizzelle, a small mm -hmm. pizza, mm -hmm. and you put it in the press and it comes out like a wafer. Mm -hmm. Now you can also put those on a spindle and make a little cone out of them and if you'd like to fill them, you could fill them mm -hmm. with cannoli cream for instance. Uh. Now I have cannoli uh, in there, how you can make your own cannoli and your cannoli uh, cream, very easy. Some of these things are very, very easy. Yes. They're not rocket science. Uh, yesterday, I thought I had a meeting last night with Circolo da Vinci, yes, as right. you know, is the club sure. from Yorktown, and because I'm on the board there. And so it was a very busy day for me, but at 4 o'clock, I said, oh, I can't go there empty-handed. I have to make something. <laughs> so I made a very simple yellow cake, but I said, but this is not enough. I can't get away with this. So I looked, and I had a ricotta. <laughs> I had fresh ricotta in the refrigerator. I said, I'm going to make a ricotta cream, and I'm uh. going to just serve it right on top of this oh, yes. nice cake. And, I, and to give it a little Italian twist, I put a little Fiore di Sicilia, which is a flavoring, like vanilla, but uh -huh. it's used in Sicily. And it's a combination of all citrus fruits. So in the batter, I put a little Fiore di Sicilia, so it got that nice Sicilian flavor, because oh, I didn't have time nice. to make cannolis. But I made the cannoli cream. And then I got the phone call that said the, <laughs> the meeting's been canceled. Oh, my gosh. So, so you had a good dessert for so dinner last night. So I said, well, that's too bad because <laughs> you're not getting it next time. <laughs> that sounds like something I could use in a cheesecake that I make. I have, and there's a wonderful cheesecake in there, wonderful uh -huh. cheesecake, ricotta cheesecake uh, recipe, yeah. yes. Yeah. And what about, I'm, I'm curious because of the way I eat, and I love pasta, but I only uh, will eat whole wheat pasta. What are your thoughts on that, whole wheat pasta? Well... Uh, I made whole wheat pasta at times, and it has a very interesting flavor, but it will not match regular conventional semolina pasta. I use semolina when I right. make pasta, semolina flour, uh, because of the taste of the wheat sort of interferes with certain, like I wouldn't use uh, uh, whole wheat pasta with pesto. Right, okay. Yeah, I, I think it's because you need a light pasta. Too heavy pasta. Times, yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you need an egg. People say to me, well, why do you, how do you choose your pasta? Depending on the dish that I'm making, because some dishes require a very light pasta. Right. Others need a broader, heavier uh, pappardelle, for instance, right. instead mm -hmm. of a tagliatelle. Yeah, with a so, ragu or something. Right, so I try to uh, uh, describe how you're going. It's very difficult to describe, because it's something that you just, you learn with right. the years of, uh, of 
making mistakes sometimes. And yep. I tell people who make mistakes when they're cooking, don't worry about it. It's only a, it's only a sauce. Throw it out. Start over. It's right. not a big deal. If oh, something doesn't come right, you know, my granddaughter one time was making a cake, and I said, you know, you have to call me when you're going to take it out of the oven. And she didn't. Yeah. Thank God she didn't get burned. But the did, cake did wind up on the floor. Huh. And I said, you know, all right, don't worry about it. We'll take the eggs out. We'll start from scratch. <laughs> we'll pick it up, throw it away. Right. We'll start it. We'll make a new one. Don't cry over spilled cake. Right. <laughs> well, your technique uh, and uh, the technique even in the preparation is uh, worth noting. Uh, the tricks, so to speak, that you use. Uh, for instance, when you... Uh, describe your stuffed clams recipe or, or clams oregano, I would think much the same. You talk about washing the clams in water and cornmeal, yes. a cup of cornmeal. And, and then surprisingly, you discover that that's because it, uh, it what? It fools the clams? It, fo it fools the clam. <laughs> they think they're in sand, and it releases all the dirt that's in the clam. Really? Yes. I'm very, very fussy about washing. Yeah. Everything. Uh, matter of fact, my in-laws in Italy wash everything, produce, fruit, even bananas, even stuff you're going to peel. They come home and they wash them with water and bicarbonate of soda mm. because they feel they're very fussy about toxins, the right. Italians, and, yeah. and stuff that you spray on. Yeah, I have a friend on. who does that. Yeah. So <laughs> with I, corn starch. I, yes, and everything. Things. I wash eggs <laughs> before I put them in the refrigerator, wow. all of that sort of thing. So. Yeah. It, you have to have a really clean kitchen. That's number one. And then you have to learn how to shop. Because yep. you can make any recipe all'improvviso, spur of the moment, mm -hmm. but you need to have the ingredients in the house. So you need to have a basic, and there is a page there about a basic Italian pantry where you can pretty much make just about anything from yes. those basic uh, ingredients. Yeah, that was, a, that was a very interesting yes. page. Very, very, uh, very Or cooking. You yeah. know, if it's too hot to cook in the summer, you don't want to spend two hours cooking a sauce, yeah. but you make pesto. You can make uh, pasta with mascarpone cheese and parmigiano, and that's a very simple recipe. You don't cook it. You just cook the pasta. Uh, you can make uh, lemon and uh, an olive oil with, salt, with a little pepper and chopped parsley. Delicious. You don't even need cheese on there. Right. So depending on what you're going to be serving, what type of meat, how heavy it is, you select your, your pasta dish according to that. Right. Yeah. So it's, it balances off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, speaking of which, we, um, we find ourselves often when uh, entertaining uh, uh, in the kitchen with everyone, and people always ask, why does everybody always end up in the oh, kitchen? I, I, oh. <laughs> well, the, 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 what struck me was something, a comment you made a while ago, which was uh, that uh, when you went to Sardinia, you started to make friends, which we can right. see is uh, probably very easy for you. It is, it is. I love but, to talk but, to uh, people. But the, the, the food-making art... Um, is a an instant gratification. It's one of the few arts that that has instant gratification, yep. and it helps. Uh, it seems to make mm -hmm. friends, yeah. so to speak, when you're all around the kitchen and preparing something together. Uh, talk a little bit about that, if you would. Well, I, you know, I find it very interesting that uh, this this really an art. There are men and women who cook for their families all over the world, all over the world, and it, it really is an art what they do. They're taken for granted a lot. But I love to see what people do in their kitchens and how they operate and what they, what, how, did, how, how could they make that? What did they have to have on hand in order to, to do that? The, I talk about the dessert dish that I learned in Sardinia, seadas, which is really a disc of pastry, which they made very rapidly, much like we would make pastry, and, um, and then cut it out. The woman cut it out with a can. I think she had a, a yeah. washed out can. Cut it out, <laughs> and then she put into it a, which we could not get here, four day old pecorino, Sardinia, Sardinia pe pecorino, which was just four days old. Oh, yeah. So it was moist sure and how, soft. Yeah. And then she covered it and she sealed it and deep fried it and popped it out and poured local honey over it and served it. That was their dessert. So I, you know, the next time I was making them with her. Well, no, <laughs> let me do that. I'll right. do that for you, you know. Yeah. So I uh, put that in the recipe, but I actually don't deep fry it here because we're all so conscious of fried foods. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, a pie maker 
So I can make four at a time. You know, that's my American coming through. <laughs> I have to be very efficient. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I wind up making four ciadas at a time, and they're beautifully crisp, but they're not fried. Uh -huh. And I use the honey as well. Okay. So, <laughs> so let me challenge you then. <laughs> yes. On how you would make squash flowers if you didn't fry them. Um, Be I either because you can. Yes, you can yeah. stuff them. You know, you can stuff them. Yeah, but then, how would you cook them? I would. I would still. Fr I personally would still fry them. You can oven fry them, or bake them. Or bake them. Mm -hmm. But my favorites are just very simple, and I grow my own zucchini. Yes. Uh -huh. Simply because I want the flowers, and I and I come and in. Why and why zucchini and not some other uh, pumpkin or? You can. Some other squash. You can. Well, because that's the tradition. Yeah. That's the tradition. I come yeah. in. I make my pastella. Yeah. My little batter. I remember being in the beaver kill one year. We have lovely friends that live up in the beaver kill, and they're of Irish descent. And they go to Ireland every year, and we go to Italy every year. Mm. And we come back, we meet in the beaver kill, mm. and we spend a couple of days together. And uh, she has a beautiful garden, but she said, what are you doing? Why are you picking all those squash flowers? I said, because we're going to make a pastella when I get in the house, and we're going to fry them up for our guests tonight. Really? I said, yes, don't worry about it. So I made a, wound up making a huge platter of, of deep fried uh, zucchini flowers. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was, the, everyone loved them. Everyone absolutely loved them. So she learned now how to make, so get those flowers. Because you know, you, in Italian cooking, you don't waste anything. Mm -hmm. You use everything. The right. way you use every part of the animal, you find a way, when you have hard bread, what you don't throw out hard bread, it's a sacrilege. Right. You either make breadcrumbs bread crumbs, or yeah. you make, uh, cubes for panzanella, which is what you put into your salads, right? Yeah, right? So right. you have to use everything. You don't throw out any food. My daughter's favorite complaint about my cooking. Oh, really? <laughs> well, <laughs> that, you don't throw anything out. <laughs> that, you, that you just cook from whatever happens to be yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> How do you find, Rosemary, when you go out to, without naming names, uh, you know, any local Italian restaurants that their food compares to homemade? Well, uh, you know, most of it is, is what we, my husband and I call pedestrian food, food that people are used to eating, and, and, but, and some of them are very good, but they, they're not quite, the taste is not quite what it is when you make it at home or when you eat it in Italy. Is that because they have to prepare for a lot of people? They have or? to prepare for yeah. a lot of people. Right. They the also have to right. sometimes cut corners in a restaurant. Gets, it's very expensive to prepare right. good food. But right. there are a lot of wonderful restaurants around. Yeah. Uh, I think we're particularly blessed in the Peatskill, Yorktown area right. to have so many wonderful restaurants. Yeah, no, that's true. But they sort right. of make the same thing. Yes. Right. Right. Well, yeah. because yeah. we're looking right. for the same right. things. Well, right. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's, uh, we're conditioned Do we have time to for ask me to ask her another question? Just yeah, because we're winding down to a couple of minutes. But yeah, we'll, we'll so, ask a question. So you are working with HVHC, the Hudson Valley Hospital Center, to uh, host the wine tasting yes. event. Right. Are you doing anything beyond the cookbook uh, to represent the, both the technique, uh, the richness in the uh, in the environment of cooking, and the actual recipes, like a uh, TV show or? Yeah, and we only have a few seconds. Yes, so. I've done some shows and I also sort of go on the road, so to speak, and talk to groups, right. uh, particularly about the quality of the food that they're eating and how it affects their health. Oh, great. Excellent. Okay, thank Rosemary you. Panio, thank you. Good thank luck you with so the cookbook. Much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Italy and it's. Uh, grazie, mille grazie. Food, right, and it's food and wine and culture. And uh, yeah, it is very interesting. And again, it makes my mouth water just <laughs> sitting here. So <laughs> maybe we'll get a quick lunch after this to have Italian food. And thank you for watching as always. Frank talks with Bruce the Blog. And remember when Bruce the Blog listens, people talk. Thank you. <laughs>